Isn't it interesting how most of the racist and sexist rhetoric in the gaming industry usually comes from people who don't actually play games, who instead come from the very people who want to bring social change to the world through the use of video games as a tool in order to push agendas? It always seems to be those specific people, and it would appear that that's what's happening right now. You see, that Park Place has compiled a bunch of information on an individual who feels that white male gamers are a problem in this world. Game Developers Conference advisor and video game consultant and developer Marina Diaz says F white men and gatekeepers. Let me ask you this. What did white men do to you? Were you in some kind of terrible relationship with a white guy? Was it so bad that you felt that all white men were exactly like this? What in the world has brought you to such a conclusion as white men being an issue when most of these video games that are failing in the market are due to nobody buying them, which does not just include white people, but includes millions of non-white folk like Asians, Blacks, Latinos, etc., etc. How are white men the problem? You see what is happening with these people and their biased, foundational lies that they're constantly pushing onto other people. It's amazing how they single out one demographic, as if we are the cause of literally every problem on God's green earth. Marina Diaz, an advisor for the Game Developers Conference, the owner of Three of Cup Games and the head of strategy for BTF Games, recently declared F white men and gatekeepers. In a now deleted post, which was shared to X by former World of Warcraft team lead Mark Kern, Diaz wrote on X, I went from thinking I'm a SE designer, meaning a crappy designer, to consult to and train teams at one of the biggest game companies in the world. Keep believing in yourself and F white men and gatekeepers. Why did that even need to be put at the very end like that? It's making me think that this lady wants to start a fight. I mean, really, who just says that out loud? It's just like, like, hey, I'm going to walk to the store and get some milk and then go home and pet my dog who is sick. By the way, F white males. Like, who talks like that? She added in a subsequent post, not all white men suck, but you know what I mean, my loves. No. I do not think that anybody knows what you mean. Now, of course, Grums provides screenshots of this. So I hopped over to his page to see these. And yes, she indeed did say this, 9-14-24. So on the 14th, that was in response to her earlier post on the same day. I don't even know why you had to put that at the end. I feel like if you had just put what you put in the first paragraph there, that nobody would have given you an issue. But it's like these people cannot help themselves. It's either that they want engagement or they're so passionate about hating a specific race of people that they have to announce it on social media or their heads will literally explode. Imagine having that kind of desire in your heart to where you feel you need to attack another race of people just so you can maintain some semblance of your sanity that you've lost throughout the years for whatever in the world happened to you. It's insane how these people think this way, but it really does not stop here. Because if you watch my videos, you know that these things get worse. I'm always digging and finding out new interesting things about these people and the companies that they work for and it certainly appears as of late that many of these companies are parroting for the exact same ideals and they're pushing them in the same way they are announcing them in the same way it's very strange we all know where this comes from it comes from way higher up but these people try to push their own individual thoughts into it to try and make it sound like it's something reasonable like it's something that could actually happen and that it differs from all of these other agendas that these people are trying to push diversity equity and inclusion okay so diaz's comments are uns surprising her three of cups games website describes the company as an ethical diverse and inclusive game studio based in london united kingdom and adds we believe that we can help to change the world through games we believe in emotions we believe in making games for everyone but the only emotions that we don't care about are those of white people as per the person who owns this company right so if she is saying on the internet that she hates white males and then she's saying here that they make games for everyone and that she believes in all emotions don't you think it's possible that this lady is outright lying to somebody which is it are you trying to include everybody into your game development or are you trying to exclude white people because you voice openly on the internet that you despise them i'm beginning to think that perhaps this lady's lying
But let's read on. Diaz has also made a number of posts denigrating white men. In April, Diaz posted growing my abs to crush nuts and obnoxious white men with them. It's like you can't even formulate and announce a thought on social media without attacking. It's just like ah, white males just like waking up in a cold sweat screaming over the idea of white men existing in this world. This lady seriously giving off some wild Alyssa Mercanti energy right now. So let's keep reading. Let's Less than two weeks later, only two weeks later, she's like, let's attack white males again. Diaz posted, why white men over 40? What's wrong with 40 year old white men? Isn't that like the age where you've already surpassed your prime and you own a business and a home and you've reached some level of success? What is the problem? It says in parentheses, for being somehow generous are allergic to saying the word diversity. It's not that they're allergic to saying diversity. It's just that you people are crazy and you're trying to exclude one race to prop up other the races, which is not something that is necessary in the slightest. In March, Diaz posted my highlight of the year. Yes, we are only in March, but is Breakin Bashia attending the Game Developers Conference? Bashia is one of the people I admire and respect the most in this industry, and we need more people like her to kick the old white privileged butts. <laughs> Man, I wish I felt this strongly about anything. The hatred of white men that this woman feels is insurmountable. It cannot be calculated by the human brain. Back in May 2023, Diaz posted organized a spontaneous little meetup in Berlin for marginalized game developers. It's been amazing. Hope to do this more often. In a subsequent post, Diaz added, I was so tired of so many cis white men at meetups. You know what? This lady is totally just baiting people. She probably does hate white men and wants people to know it and wants to get a reaction so that she can get engagement. But you know what? I have no problem showing that people act this way. Even if you're trying to get attention, I think that people should know when you hate a specific race of people, especially when you yourself push so strongly on your own website that you are trying to include everybody in game development and to get everyone involved in the game industry and to positively shape the future of gaming while you're holding yourself back with ridiculous amounts of racism. Marina D Diaz, this is her screenshot right here. It says in December 2021, Diaz wrote, I think NFTs are just, again, some people wanting to be better than the rest, and I think it has lots to do with white supremacy and dangerous stuff. F this S, man. Wow. Somebody give this lady an ice-cold glass of water. Help cool her emotions down, all right? She is trying to warn everyone about how unhinged she really is, and we really need to take the hint and get her some help. So let's go over to her page and reach out to her and okay never mind <laughs> Her tweets are protected, so nobody can even get a hold of this lady. It says right here that she's an emotional game designer. Yeah, no kidding! And storyteller, head of strategy, biz dev. Why is she the head of anything? If you are trying to push positive strategy for your company, why is this lady the one that you choose? She's not going to aim it at white people. She's going to try and exclude them, and that's going to hurt your business. But she's biz dev and relations, BTF Games, advisor at the official Game Developers Conference. Why? How did she even land this gig in the first place? And she was a Forbes under 30. She, they, amazing. Every single checkbox ticked. It's like she is a diversity, equity, and inclusion pushers wet dream. So let's move on to her actual website. Marina Diaz says that she is an emotional game designer. <laughs> I design emotional games with soul and innovative projects. I like working carefully, having time to think about all the details and the mission of making experience experiences that will stick to the players forever while well, the impressions that you're leaving with people are certainly long lasting i'm sure that it's going to be around for a while and that not many people are going to let go of the things that you have been saying so this is what she is all about she says that she is the ceo at three of cups games an ethical and diverse game studio based in london she is involved in many community initiatives and activism so yeah she's just a big old ray of sunshine, isn't she? Marina is also a regular speaker at games events such as GDC, EGX, PAX, Amaze. In 2023, she also hosted Independent Games Festival at GDC in San Francisco. Now, do you remember when I was making videos about the GDC and how people at the GDC were screaming? You may not recall this, but at the Game Developers Conference, a bunch of game developers got together, many of them Sweet Baby Ink Defenders, and they all stood in a 
field lamenting at the existence of gamers. This is from PC Gamer from back in March 2024. Watch a bunch of game developers screaming in a public park to protest the state of the industry. It feels so hard to be here and pretend like everything is fine. And this is all about gamers. So they're all standing in a field screaming. Check this out. And they're all screaming, lamenting, feeling deep, deep negative emotions about gamers. And in many cases, white people somehow appear to be at the forefront of this issue. And this problem persists even today. Months later, after everything has occurred, people are still going onto social media and attacking white people for absolutely zero reason at all. And that is why these ideals fail. That's why these people's video games fail. They just fail because these people have no idea how to control themselves, how to handle their own emotions, and how to treat other people with respect, even if they disagree with them, either because of their pigmentation or because of their ideas in their brain. No matter what, having a healthy dialogue and critical thinking skills is necessary in a world like this. And many of these people show a clear lack of one or the other, or sometimes, and especially in this case, both. Now let's take a look at their actual video game website, Three of Cups Games. This is that lady who has gone protected and refuses to to talk to anybody because of all this negative backlash she's getting now. Three of Cups Games is an ethical, diverse, and inclusive game studio based in London, United Kingdom. Boy, am I not getting tired of hearing about that all the time. Absolutely not. Let's keep going. We believe that we can help to change the world through games, which is interesting because I believe that you should use good ideas to change video games so that the world is happy. I feel like that should be the mindset, but sure, okay, we just want to use games for social change is what they're saying. We believe in emotions, and again, this does not include white people, but above all, we believe in people who are not white. And it shows a list of our games, Summer Gems, and uh, the star, Cardomancy Anthology Project. It was so weird. I was like, this image interests me, and this name right here interests me. What is it about Three of Cups that is so weird. And you know what? I looked it up and my finding shocked me when I saw it. I looked it up on Wikipedia just because I figured, hey, just quick search. And it says three of cups is the third card on the suit of cups in tarot cards. So tarot decks, we're getting into witchcraft stuff right now, guys. It is part of the minor arcana and some decks the suit is named chalices of goblets instead. And you have to see what the meaning behind three cups is. It's so weird. This card often carries the meaning of joyful social contact, although it may be considered to be rather superficial, unlike the two of the same suit, which is considered more personal. It represents groups coming together to focus on a common emotional goal. So the name of this company that is pushing for social change in the gaming industry is using the name of a tarot card that represents social change. And they really are not kidding when they say that social change is at the forefront of what they do. It speaks of a sense of community and can indicate the time to get more involved by helping an inner passion for caring may be discovered and energy put forth toward a goal will be positive and nurturing. And here's the best part. It can also signal that this is the time to reach out if things have been particularly rough in the past. So amazing. And I found a really funny fact at the bottom here. It says in fiction, the circle of three novel, the three of cups comes up in a tarot reading and convinces the main character to pursue her Wiccan studies and befriend the two girls whom she met through her original encounter with witchcraft. But I mean, even if you're able to look past that, you still have the issue of hating white male gamers. And that is something that we've seen prevalent across the space, especially in gaming consultancy agencies like Sweet Baby Inc. and their best little friends hiding in the woodwork trying to pretend that they don't exist. Kim Belair was pushing for this exact thing, and she has stated along with some of her compatriots about how much they dislike white male gamers in the past. And these people in Sweet Baby Inc. and these people in GD 
CDC are the same exact people developing games like these, the Unknown 9 video game with Anya Shalatra. Do you guys remember that video that I made way back when I first started making gaming industry videos? This was several months ago. Sweet Baby Inc. Infected Unknown 9 Awakening reportedly has poor pre-orders and atrocious Steam wishlist rankings. So this game's doing terribly and it is a Sweet Baby game. I remember making this a while back and I haven't heard anything about the game since then, but apparently there have been three more videos about it, including a gameplay video. But you guys have to see what they're trying to do here. Not only are they trying to push a Sweet Baby Inc. fueled video game with this Unknown 9 title, they're also trying to use this title to advertise a transmedia shared universe where they have this story branching out into novels and tv shows and radio talk shows etc etc and considering what the game is going through i do feel that it is hilarious to point that out because as a business decision i don't think that it's going to work but that park place compiles everything together nicely and they say developer reflector entertainment and publisher bandai namco appear to have a massive financial disaster on their hands with the Sweet Baby Inc. Infected Unknown 9 Awakening, and they point out how the game goes on sale on October 17th, 2024, so not long from now, and there has not been that much gameplay to show off about this. So that title is approaching, the date is approaching, and it's just not getting a lot of PR. It's not getting a lot of media attention. It was added to Gabrutus Rambo's Sweet Baby Inc. Detected Steam Curator list back in March. That was a while back, and that's when I reported on it. Kim Belair, of course, listed in the game's credit section, as well as David Bad He's credited as the brand content manager, which would actually explain why this game is doing so poorly. They certainly did not do any favors for Tales of Kinsera Zhao, but it says that he was doing that while Belair is credited as the story architect at Sweet Baby Incorporated. And this is also reflected in Bedard's LinkedIn page that he is the co-founder, chief operating officer, and director. Also showing here the brand content manager position. That was back in 2018, but he was also a senior product manager at Ubisoft, which is very important if you know where Star Wars Outlaws went and where their newest title, Assassin's Creed Shadows, is going as well. Now, Dr. Disaster pointed out something really interesting about this Sweet Baby project before we get to the actual numbers that can support this story. So it says that Dr. Disaster shared that his retail source who manages nine stores has not had a single pre-order for this game now we do have to take dr disaster at his word for this one but if his word is trusted then that indeed spells disaster for the sweet baby ink game from reflector studios this person runs nine retail stores in a highly populated area and i'm being told that in all nine stores combined there hasn't been a single pre-order for unknown nine awakening and he provides an unconfirmed source about 14 stores from another person that owns them uh, saying that they weren't getting pre-orders either but we'll see if that is confirmed as per dr disaster a little bit later on so if you want to follow what he's been doing with this game as well as his other content give him a subscribe and he probably has some great content to share but on top of this information steam db reports that the game is currently in the 390th position for most wish listed steam games and it is in the 3092nd spot on the top sellers list which is abysmal this game isn't even set to have minor success. It looks like it's going to flop as soon as it's released. To be honest, I really have not seen much on this game, and it's been in the back of my mind for a minute. So the fact that it's just around the corner, which is something I also recently discovered, it's only like a month or so away, I don't think that this game is going to get out to enough people. It, it appears that the people who work at Sweet Baby Inc. and who work these brands and work these marketing strategies just don't know how to do their jobs. And that doesn't really surprise me since a few of them appear to be from Sweet Baby Inc. Not even Park Place finds that surprising. They say it's not surprising given Sweet Baby Inc.'s infection, but on top of that, it was reported back in March that either Reflector or Bandai Namco were nuking their Steam forums and mass banning gamers who mentioned Sweet Baby Inc. or described their game as woke. They were banning a bunch of people. It said right here that they wiped around 99% of the forum because so many people were questioning this game, and since so much time has passed, I imagine that it hasn't gotten much better. But let's be real, none of us are going into the unknown nine forums and seeing what people are saying there it's probably a crap show just like it is in every other steam forum that tries to push diversity equity and inclusion so hard and pushing it hard is exactly what they're doing i'm not making this up at all let's go to their main page on their front page an environment designed for you to thrive in this is reflector studios's website meet members of our video game studio and they have a bunch of people here to show off they've got a lot of employees 
things. But if you scroll down just a little bit, teamwork that reflects our values, the diversity and inclusion committee. This employee run committee's mission is to raise awareness and accountability about issues related to diversity and inclusion its goal is to promote dialogue and action to ensure diversity remains a priority and asset across all our company's endeavors i remember seeing almost this exact quote on the weta workshop website where they were trying to push diversity equity and inclusion all these websites keep saying the exact same thing or very similar versions of the same thing hey diversity equity and inclusion that's our top priority. What about making video games? What does this have to do with making video games? Absolutely nothing. But this is something that all of these companies, including this one, are prioritizing because their priority is not making video games. Their priority is pushing for social change through video games. They use video games as a tool to push for diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's a brainwashing tactic subliminal messaging and more so these days outright verbal messaging just throwing it right in your face now they don't even care that's what you can expect with a company like this this is on their front page it's not like you have to dig for this it's right there smack dab in the middle of their website it says a proud member of the canadian center for diversity and inclusion reflector supports its dni committee in its ongoing projects including contributions to canada-wide and montreal-based organizations and participation in industry -wide wide DNI initiatives such as the raise the game diversity pledge the committee also provides access to CCDI webinars and creates opportunities for larger conversations by hosting topic specific discussion forums so dumping more money into nonsensical crap that nobody asked for ever in order to push something that nobody wanted ever forever it seems so let's click on raise the game right so we check on raise the game and it shows you an article from September 27th 2021 so keep in mind this was several years ago, Reflector Entertainment reinforces its commitment to diversity and inclusion in the world of video games by joining the Raise the Game initiative alongside Bandai Namco Entertainment Europe. And if you do not recall, I reported that Bandai Namco was going woke, but if we're being truthful and we actually do a little bit more digging, we'll find that they were pushing for diversity, equity, and inclusion for a while and in collaboration with these other gaming studios that are pushing for the same thing. So there is no doubt in my mind that at some point, these people have all had contact with Sweet Baby Inc. And it's really funny because so many people say, well, Sweet Baby Inc. is irrelevant now. They're just one gaming consultancy agency out of many. Well, apparently not. These people have their tendrils in a lot of studios. I can't even count them anymore. Every single time a new game pops up, I'm wondering in the back of my mind if Sweet Baby Inc. had something to do with it. And it's been proven true several times now that Sweet Baby Inc. just has those connections with people like Bandai Namco who say that their audiences want more diversity and inclusivity in games they had an entire presentation a powerpoint presentation to show to people to prove that gamers want more diversity equity and inclusion and at the same time they did that while not understanding it fully which is why we need a little bit of levity in our lives let's take a look at unknown nines ridiculous advertisement where they're trying to push for a narrative shared universe in the form of transmedia if you don't know what transmedia is it's basically multi-platform media a shared universe across multiple types of media like video games, movies, books, etc. So you have an Unknown 9 video game and then you have a book spin-off, a radio talk show spin-off that either continues the story or reenacts the story. Now, do you see something interesting about this trailer? It's getting completely destroyed in a ratio. 587 likes to 3,500 dislikes. You know, they always say that gamers are not really disliking these videos, but they have no proof. Gamers are making themselves heard on the internet and there's nothing that these people can do about it they're really trying to convince you that their shared universe is going to be a thing when they're sitting at the bottom of wish lists and most anticipated games and top sellers they're not even making top 10s or top 100s they're sitting in the thousands in fact how in the world are they going to get this thing off of the ground when it's very clear that gamers have already made up their minds and that they're not going to play this game that's okay let's take a look at another official live action trailer about this game 
came from IGN, disliked into complete oblivion, 700 likes to 2,000 dislikes. In some ways, this doesn't even feel fair because there are only a handful of videos for this game. In fact, I only see about three or four that actually show off anything about it, including the video right here, the first preview from six months ago, 92,000 views with 1,000 likes to 8,500 dislikes. Obliterated. You can't even see the white bar almost. Do you see how the pendulum is swinging the other direction and how it's starting to swing even faster? It really does seem that way now because gamers are starting to pay far more attention than they ever have, which is why they're able to point out when these companies are pushing for diversity, equity, and inclusion on such a wide scale. And it's so interesting that so many of these companies have intermingling going on behind the scenes with gaming consultancy agents like Kim Belair and her compatriots weaseling their way into all of these different gaming organizations. It's so weird how their growth is going mostly unnoticed by industry heads and more so being noticed by gamers. And speaking of gamers, let's head over to Steam and see how many of those gamers are wishlisting and looking forward to this game, Unknown 9 Awakening. 390 on most wishlisted and 3,092, so confirmed that it is not going to be a top-selling title, which brings me to my final point, that these companies are willfully heading into a furnace. They want their games to die, it appears, because they keep saying such ridiculous things on the internet, pushing for a diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda, and plastering it all over their video game websites, which is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. And when people point it out, and when people ask questions, what is the first thing they do? They attack white male gamers, and then they protect their Twitters, because that's all that they can do. And that is all I've got for you guys in this video today. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you haven't had the chance to like it and share it with your friends, that would be awesome. And hey, if you're feeling ultra spicy, consider subscribing to my channel so that you're always up to date on what kind of thing I've got going on. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Later. Meow, meow.